So in this video, we're going to be talking about gas assisted injected molding. Yes, this is very exciting stuff. This is how this particular box is made. We're going to talk about why this is so important and why some of the other features are really just as important in making this an incredible actual power speaker to have. We're going to talk about this feature right here, which is called the peak performance spelled P-E-E-K, says peak. What that stands for is polyether ether ketone. Now, what does that mean? It's a fancy word for a fancy plastic, which is used for all kinds of smart things out there. But most importantly, we're also starting to see it come into the electronics industry. And first and foremost, we've seen it in actual studio monitors. So not the professional PA, let's turn up the volume, crank it up loud. We're talking about the, I wanna actually make music and I'm in a studio and I wanna play back and I wanna have that perfect reproduction of sound and I want my highs to be smooth and clear across the whole frequency band. This is very important. That accuracy and quality is there. Now, Harbinger's taking that one step further they've actually applied it in their actual horn. So now, instead of it being made out of a metal, like a, a titanium or aluminum or any other type of metals that you see other companies using, or just regular plastic vinyl stuff, they're using polyether ether ketones. Now this is, again, this is like really high tech, great stuff. And it makes the sound not just richer and smoother, but it allows them to endure much higher heat temperatures for the overall operation of the actual tweeter horn. These are all very important things. This is all part of the tech that's in here. And again, this is all working to making this speaker better than its previous model and a lot better than a lot of other models in its price point. Another great technological feature that's put in here to make this speaker better than a lot of others and better than its predecessor is the app that they've included in this. It's driven on the same platform that their 4000 series is, but we're going to see it at a much more reasonable price. They brought it in on the 3000, allowing you to do a lot more things. Now, Maybe you're not an app guy. Maybe you don't want that. That's all right. All the features you're going to want to use are on the back side of the speaker as well. This, along with a whole bunch of other great features, makes this speaker something you definitely want to be listening to and definitely put on your buy list next time you're at Guitar Center. My name's Robin. You're watching Expert Island, and we're going to be talking about the Harbinger V3415. So the 3000 series offers a lot of great technology and a lot of design features built right into the box to make it as good as possible. So this way it's going to sound and work as good as you want it to be. Now, some of those features are built right into it. It has a 60 by 90 degree design for sound dispersion. So this way you can use it as a vertical or you can lay it down as an actual monitor. So this way it will do a job perfectly both ways for you. Whatever you need that speaker to do, it will be there for you. Now, the other feature is the design of the actual unit. It's designed to be very rigid, to give the box a lot of designed, engineered rigidity in the actual product. So this way, the material is constant. All the way around, it's going to have the same overall acoustic sound to it, maximizing dampness. So this way, the actual sound that radiates is going to travel out the front of the speaker versus traveling out from around the speaker. And that's important because we want to get as much energy coming out this way with very little effect out of the side. It's going to maximize stereo performance, but it also limits the amount of cob. That's when we get a lot of bad energy or bad sound from the box coming off of the sides, tops, or bottoms. Done a nice job with their branding right into the handle, but most importantly, this is all rubber. So it's a metal bar inside there, rubber. This is not going anywhere. It makes it safe, makes it easy. That handle is also repeated on the top of the speaker. So that's another good positive thing. Now, when you set it up as a monitor, instead of putting it right on the plastic on the floor, it's got these nice rubber rails going down the actual unit. Again, really nice, trims it off nicely, but more importantly, saves the product. So let me take a moment to actually tell you why having this speaker be made by an actual gas assisted injected molding is so important. These are things you wouldn't know as a consumer. When you're looking at the same thing as me, you wouldn't know necessarily that this speaker was built and manufactured in that style, but it's very, very important. Internally, it's where the compromises and sacrifices are made between a good AutoCAD drawing design where they've engineered the speaker to sound just the way they want, but then due to manufacturing restrictions, they can't do it. So they have to compromise or there's hidden compromises where consistency in the actual build product isn't the same throughout the entire unit. 
Well, when you have gas-assisted injected moldy, all of those problems go away. It allows them to access and make sure that the, the actual building material is consistent all around. It allows them to make parts with much more detail and accuracy than ever before. And it allows them to come out with a product that is basically superior to whatever they had before. Even if they were using this exact same box, just by changing that one step, by having an assisted gas molding process is basically going to make this box better. Because remember, today everything's done in a computer on AutoCAD and it's done to perfection. They can go through sound engineers, mechanical engineers, design engineers. Everybody gets their hands on the product before me and you ever see it or, of course, hear it. But, of course, if there's any parts of the speaker that can't be reproduced in an actual factory, well, then that becomes a problem. Gas-assisted injected molding is really the magic that makes all this work. We see it a lot in automotive. We see it in really high-tech, big equipment. And now we're seeing it right here in Harbinger speakers. Keeping in the importance of having a good box design, you also want to make sure you have a good grill design in the front. Not just for appearance sake, because of course it does look really nice with those vertical slots, but having the dampener inside behind it there is going to cut down on any noise that this actual grill can make. Now to add to that, to make it even better, this unique design that they have built right into their actual speakers adds to that actual stiffness, making this grill even better because of the flex and bend in it. It minimizes the amount of unsupported mesh by having these ridges and the actual curves coming up and around. Smart engineering design. This is what happens. I mean, Harbinger has been putting a lot of attention over the last few years in their design, in their styling to make it not just look good, but sound good and last long. So they're doing a really good job and they certainly did a good job when they decided to update and bring out the 3000 series. So let's have a better look at the back and see all the features. Now, the 3000 series, regardless if you're looking at the 3412 or the 3415, is going to offer you exactly the same on the back amp plate. They're sharing both exactly the same technology. They share the same app. Even the 4000 series now shares the same app as the 3000 series. They have brought that all together to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to use it. Now, at the opening, I said you didn't have to use the app if you didn't want to because a lot of the presets are all built in. So the defaults are all built right into it. So of course, you've got your vocal options, which are going to be your standard, your club, your speech, floor monitor settings. These are all really nice. If you get to the last one, it'll be your custom app settings. Now, of course, you can go into the app and you can change everything around. We'll look at that a little bit as well, uh, but we'll definitely cover all the features on the back. So we have two inputs, which are combo jacks, which can be, of course, this is, you know, a great Harbinger product. It's going to give you your line, your guitar, and your instrument inputs, all of that on the first two options right there. Then it follows through with input number three, which is your quarter inch balance, unbalanced, left being your mono input. It still has a 3.5 and now a new and advanced Bluetooth functionality to it. Then we have our bass and treble controls located at the top, and then we have our routing system built right into it, which is basically how we're going to get our smart connectivity. Because, you know, Harbinger's really been known for this for the last few years, how easy and convenient all their speakers are when it comes to connecting two of them together and being able to unify features like the Bluetooth, like the bass and treble controls, input options, all from one speaker, and have all of that operate on the second speaker. Now, to make that even better this year, with this model here, their Bluetooth also offers TWS true wireless stereo connectivity. So you can easily just have two speakers wirelessly connected to your phone or iPad and play music straight from it. Now, that's also a great way to go if you just need to play some backtracks or if you're not at the bar and you just simply want to be able to play music while you go and have a drink. So let's look at a couple of different ways you can connect the speaker. Now, of course, this is right now being hooked up through a mixer. We have a controller plugged into a mixer and that mixer is plugged into both speakers, one on the actual right side and the other one onto the left side. It is that straightforward, it is that simple. That's why these two speakers are here today. That's what we're gonna be doing. Our actual sound tests will be done through the mixer and controller, but I wanna show you how easy it is to connect these speakers together. This is gonna be our secondary speaker here, and this one's gonna be our primary speaker here. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna show how easy it is if you wanna actually just connect these via an XLR cable. That means I would have plugged everything in here and then just run into the two speakers. So now let's take a minute and I'm gonna show you how this works. We're gonna start first by using the actual linked out option. So we're gonna smart connect the two speakers, this being our main speaker that's linked out here. We're gonna plug into there first. And before we move on to the other speaker, we're gonna set this guy up in the stereo mode. So there it is, it's in stereo. So this is our output 
anything that's going on here is going to come out on the other speaker in stereo. So of course, here's our second speaker. Now this is simple enough. We came out of the output on our main and our secondary speaker is going to have this plugged in here. Now, what do we need? This is going to be the linked in option. So we're going to go into end. So whatever happens on the main speaker is going to transition onto this speaker here. Now, because we set the first speaker in as a stereo output, so this way it's going to run in a stereo mode, what happens is this is only going to get one channel. So that means anything that's happening on the left side in this case is going to come out. We're going to use the actual Bluetooth functionality and show you how it's not just going to connect to this speaker, but how we can get this speaker to connect to the second one incredibly easy. There's basically a flashing blue light, which is what we're going to see here. And then that means I come to my phone or tablet. So here's going to be my actual 3415. I'm going to press that button there to connect to it. Now remember when you turn it on, you've activated it's on. So you can choose to turn it off. Now, if you plan on using these speakers, let's say in your workshop or your garage, and you plan on leaving them on all the time, that's your choice. Uh, once you engage the Bluetooth and Link Connect, until you turn the power off, that function is on and ready to go. So now to achieve an actual smart two-speaker connection, so a TWS true wireless connection, all we need to do now that we have a solid blue light here because we've connected our Bluetooth to the speaker is go to the second speaker. So when you're ready to actually pair off to the second speaker, and this is two speakers are going to connect together. True wireless stereo means speaker to speaker connectivity. I'm going to actually turn on the actual unit. It's going to start blinking, and then we're going to wait. And there you go. Now the light's green. Now they're both connected together. Now remember, at any point in time, by turning off one Bluetooth connection on one speaker, it will automatically disengage and turn off the Bluetooth on the second speaker as well. This is very important because, of course, if you're using it in a bar or restaurant, you don't want other people to accidentally connect to it. So, of course, having it off when you're not using it is always important. And for power, of course, we're looking at 2,000 watts peak and that's 400 watts RMS. They do, with the new design, break it up differently. You have 350 RMS at the bottom, and that's gonna make it 50 on the top. Plenty of power, of real power, to get the job done. 129 dBs peaked out, so that's really impressive. So again, comfortable to do any size show within reason. You always have to practice to make sure you're getting the right amount of speaker power for the right amount of people. So the whole idea of today's sound test is to actually show you how nice this tweeter is. So of course we still have the XD driver running the 15 inch. That's very important because that is a great woofer. It's minimum amount of distortion and flexibility in the driver. But to add to that now we have the smooth rich sound of the actual peak tweeter. The performance is amazing. That's why it's called a peak performance. We're going to be playing at a reasonable volume level today. So this way you can really hear what we're playing. That's what it's all about. The microphones are all set up. Everything's all ready to go. Let's see what we can do. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. That's always very important. That's why we have the options down there. If you haven't subscribed before, please do. We're still always looking for subscribers. It'd be awesome. It really doesn't do much except shows you that you're part of the team. When you ask a question, it shows me that you're a subscriber and I appreciate that. Let's take a minute and once again revisit the actual peak. And what I've got in my hand is actual 3D printer to show you what kind of investment financially they have to make. So they've made a big commitment. They've decided they want to go with an even better material than they've had before and anything anybody else has been offering on an actual PA speaker. We've covered that. But what's the actual investment cost? There's a reason why this product's used on very high-end products. Because this is PLA 3D printer. This is a standard roll for your 3D printer. If you don't have one, this is what it looks like. It's filament. goes in your 3D printer. Now this on Amazon is an average price of $25 to $30. I've got lots of it because I have a really nice 3D printer. Now, if I wanted Peak instead of actual PLA, because they do offer this product in a variety of different types of material, well, that one, instead of costing me $25 to $30, will cost me over $700 for that roll. $25 to $30 for this guy? $700 if I want to have it in Peak instead of PLA. That's how much better that material is in that tweeter. So in today's sound test, I've got two, not one, but two Marantz MPM 3500R ribbon microphones. We got one set up in front of both speakers. It's all been pre-measured and I spent a lot of time yesterday sampling this to get it as good as possible because I have no intention on actually changing the EQing of the actual speakers, adding anything or taking anything away. We're not gonna be compressing. We're not gonna be doing any noise reductions. We're not gonna be doing any of that. When they're actually on and we're doing the sound test, this is what you're going to get. Speaker, microphone, and you. That being said, anything I do here is never as good as you actually going down to the store. If you want to, you can go down to one of over 300 guitar centers. 
You also have woodwind and brasswind to go to, and you also have music and arts. These are all great options. Now, of course, our top link is for musicians friend. So all the links, of course, are affiliate links, and that's what helps support this channel. So by all means, use those links to shop around. But if you're still pondering, by all means, go down to a store and they'll definitely help you out. So nothing beats a local music store for great personal support. hit the like button if you like the video that's great participation on that like button is always good and if you really want to find out what's going on hit the pin button and then you'll find out my little short videos my pins all that kind of stuff it'll be there for you besides that you got questions you got comments leave them down below that's exactly what we're looking for so I want to give you a brief overview of the app. Now this is very smart. The couple of important big features is we are going to have a video where we're going to talk just specifically about the app. So what I want to show you right now is that when you start the app and your speakers are on, you'll notice that I'm not connected to either one, but down here, the lights on the front of the speaker are both white. So as a point of view from front of house, so you're on the actual dance floor in the reception of a wedding versus where the speakers are gonna be located, you'll be able to stand back with the actual app, your phone or tablet. And if they're white, they're not connected. If I connect to the first one, we're gonna see that it's gonna ask me to confirm and we'll notice that speaker over there is flashing blue. That's the one I wanna to connect to. Well, I hit the connect button and then that speaker is now permanently blue. These are the current values and settings on the app for that speaker. Now, again, if I want to switch over to the other speaker, all I would need to do is hit the broadcast button, disconnect from this one, and then connect to the second one. And what'll happen then? 
we'll see this speaker here. It's flashing blue. I can confirm or cancel if you want to move on, but we'll confirm on that one. And we'll also get to see what the values are on that one. Now, of course, I can change any of these values. All of that's available to me. I have all the presets built in here. So everything we saw in the back is on the speaker as well. So anything we want to do, we can do it from there. It's as simple as that. Now, again, I'm going to have a whole video where I just reviewed the actual app, but I did want to cover the fact that you've got control of your Bluetooth options, your EQ options, your gain controls for your bass and treble. They're all here in the actual app. And again, because the actual speakers are always labeled the same, of course, because they're the same model and you currently can't relabel them, but for sure, again, white, press the option to connect to one of them. So I've chosen this one here and look at that flashing blue. Now I know if I want to go to that one, hit cancel, hit the actual connect on the second one, that one's blue. That's great. That really makes the app very useful and easy to use. Again, I'll have a whole video where I review just the app, but it does work. It's very stable and it's very easy to operate. Now, remember, this is good for live play for a band. It's good for house of worship. It's also good for DJing with. Just keep it in perspective to size. They are very loud, but more importantly, they sound great. So if you are going to play in a venue that's more tuned down, corporate events, that sort of thing where they're, they're looking for quality, not quantity when it comes to volume, these are going to come in pretty handy for those jobs. This saves you from having to lug around 75 to 100 pound speakers with you everywhere. It's a great alternative. And it's a great speaker to have because most of the gigs out there are smaller ones most of the time. And then you grow as you get bigger. So at this point, it's my time to say thank you very much for watching. Maybe I'll see you in the next video. But hey, if you want to watch something else, there's, there's another box right here. That might be very helpful. That's what YouTube says. And you can always subscribe down here.